<laughs> Good evening, everybody, and you're very welcome. Um, it's me, Paddy, from across the shock. And tonight on Paddy and Pals, we have one of my favourite knife makers, and he's a traditional knife maker, which puts him a level above everybody else. <laughs> and it's Ashley Harrison. Ashley, you're very welcome to the podcast, and thank you for taking the time. I know yep. you're a busy man. It's a pleasure to be on. <laughs> I don't know what, you, what you're going to expect from me, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get it started then. Tell us a wee bit about Ashley Harrison, how he started knives, what he does, where he works. Just a wee bit about you. Uh, well, so, yeah, starting from the beginning, I guess. And I'm technically, I'm a fourth generation she Sheffield cutlery industry person, if, that, if, that's, a, yeah. if that's a weird word in that. Uh, so my, my granddad, great granddad, and my father, they were all die sinkers originally. Uh, so they were all, you know, passed down grand, great grandfather to granddad to dad to my dad, passed down through that. And then obviously as, as times progressed and things like that, die sinking sort of stopped or stopped in the sense of somebody literally chiseling away. What is die sinking? Uh, so die sinking is, uh, you know, your, your tankards and your uh, silverware and things like that. Yeah. You see, not in traditional Sheffield cutlery, they basically made the big, huge press dies that were then you know, loaded with the sheets of steel. Oh, right, yeah. and down. Yeah. They made yeah. the negatives, which made the the end result. Uh, but as, yeah, as, as time progressed and things like that, that now you know that's done by CNC or whatever. But people have sort of moved on from you know hand chisels. Uh, so my dad was obviously looking for somewhere else to work and uh, stumbled across. Uh, John Malin, who used to own Wright, and that was that's probably going on for about thirty years ago now, give a take. Uh, and then, yeah, as, as I as I got older and stuff, I was sort of raised in various garages. You have a granddad's garage and uh, a dad's garage, and my my other granddad's are, uh, a keen biker and stuff, so I was in his as well. So basically, I was just I was raised around tunnels and things like getting mucky. Um and yeah, just one one school holiday i was i was ill uh i think it was about 14 or something like that and nobody could look after me at home kind of thing so my dad said well you're just gonna have to come to work with me basically and you know sit in the chair and just don't touch anything uh and i didn't <laughs> listen to him and I, <laughs> I was trying to look for things to do and uh, the boss at the time said you fancy you know do this job it's a safe job kind of thing we can set you on and i, I sat on a fly press for a week while I got better, and you know, and a few a few quid for my uh, for my days, and then that that was pretty much it. That I thought I quite fancy this. This should be quite good. And then yeah, I got to sixteen, left left school, started an engineering course in college, and then started here part time. Ran that through, and then as soon as I was out of college, full time. Uh, and then yeah, I've been doing it now for yeah thirteen years now. I think this be my fourteenth year. Your dad's a knife maker. He is, he is now, yeah. So he's, he's originally a die sinker, but he is now, well, he's yeah. been, been making knives for close to 30 years now. So right. uh -huh. I, I, I guess that classes him as a knife maker. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then, so yeah, I worked for Wrights for uh, probably yeah, going on for about 10 years uh, before I then started sort of thing. Not not so much getting bored, but, you know, I was doing the same stuff quite regularly. Yeah. And oh, I, I fancy, a, you know, a hand at some of this, you know, like you see like all your, your stand show stuff and all that, you know, your fancy bits. And I thought, oh, I, I fancy having a go at trying to learn how to do some of that. Uh, and then, yeah, just started watching YouTube videos, to be fair, um, seeing how certain people did certain things and just sort of having a look at what I'd got in the workshop and think, can I have a go at that? Can I not have a go at that? Um yeah, lots and lots and lots of trial and error. Instagram makes it look a lot better than it is. There's a lot of stuff <laughs> in the world I've never seen the light of day. Uh, but yeah, and then here I am now, thanks to obviously to yourselves and things like that for sort of pushing me out there a bit more and things. And I've got a bit more of a following now and I'd like you know my skill levels progressing as as I've sort of tried and things, and yeah. I'm, I'm where I am now, I guess. Really. About as excited as that gets, but yeah. <laughs> That, yeah, that 13 years of doing something to the, the degree that you're doing it now kind of mm. makes you an expert, which the rest of us will never get that privilege. <laughs> I see. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of smoke and mirrors knife making. I think 
ask ask any knife maker that's willing to be honest with you and there's a lot of tricks and things that make things look a lot better than they actually are and things like but then that's that'd be like any job we know how to make it look good but like it like what ashley what what I wouldn't say it's necessarily, it's not necessarily a trick, but it's a trick, a trick to your eye, I would say. Uh, you know the, oh, can I actually show you? Um, the file work stuff, so. Oh, I. How, how visible that is, but they, they're not, they, they're just the, you know, the traditional pattern stuff. That looks like, you know, when you, when you see it there, then to, to an untrained eye, you look a bit, bloody, how do you, how do you draw all that stuff? All it literally is, is a series of, lines little grooves and dashes just done in a set order and you can make quite literally any pattern you sort of want to really it's just knowing obviously how to make that pattern but a lot of the time i mean we literally just sit you know if, if i want to make say a new a new style of pattern or something i'll either find a piece of scrap steel and just you know put a few notches in and sort of go oh that looks good or oh no that looks that looks great or i'll literally just get like a, a small a piece of paper and you just draw two lines as if you've got your actually your spring, uh -huh. and then you would literally draw in your first file cut that would be a round file, and then you suddenly get this wavy pattern. And then suddenly, if you want to add, say, something spiky to it, you add some spiky stuff because that's a triangle file. And then before you know it, you just work add that up, <coughs> mix, mix and match. Um, before you know it, you've got yourself a new pattern or a, a slightly different pattern or whatever it's but obviously to you you think we'd maybe just sit there and just sort of do the whole thing in one whereas we might just start with the the round grooves first do all the round grooves then we do all the triangle grooves then we do all the lines and then that works into the pattern but that's another one of that i guess you know probably rambling a bit now but that's one of those perhaps uh, yeah well welcome to the that's... show mate rambling is what we do <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is true, but that's that's the thing. No, I mean, I mean, you introduced it as a trick, or and then you said, look, it, it's it's more. It, you you probably think that there's more to it than than there is, but yeah. I, guess, I guess that's, that's what I mean. That's, that's, yeah. yeah, but you take it for granted. I mean, I still think that that that's an amazing little bit of craftsmanship. I mean, even even it's I think I it's probably just become right. second nature. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I probably would. You probably will. I probably will dumb it down a bit. Think, oh yeah, it's fine. I'm forgetting that obviously I've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's easy to sort of fall into that trap. But it, I mean, like, I've helped people. You know, I've, I've had people in. I mean, well, my, my uh, girlfriend. I've had, I've had her in to make a knife. I think knife making is not as hard as people think it is when you break it down into its individual bits. Mm -hmm. It just takes like it just takes a long time to get the whole thing into one. One of the hardest things must be getting a new pattern and having to do the whole thing from scratch. Yeah. You know, from that, a, a, do you do that the a new drawing? Uh, no, so the, this is why I've done it in my workshop. So. The, the way I do that is I have a, a little box of stuff and it's literally just full of, before I tip them all out, just full of various bits of, you know, well, there's, there's the webs for the uh, for that trapper. Yeah. So that's that. And I, I just make them out of, um, I think it's just like a vulcanized fiber. fiber I've got tons of it from a previous job we did years back. Uh -huh. And it has like a little bit of sort of flex and spring in it. So it can almost, you can make working knives with it without having to obviously mess around with steel. So it's way yeah. cheaper. And I can just sort of, you know, I sketch the rough shape on it and think, yeah, that looks as near as, you know, as near as I can get it by eye. And then, you know, make it into that, obviously, you then make your, your blade or whatever. And then stick it all together and it either works first time and you go <laughs> and have it. Ashley, can oh, I just, are they like, or do you make them, when, when you make your first one, is it like yeah. a blank? Do you make it as a blank and then put all the edging to it if you're happy with it? Take, you don't get it all sharp, then put it together. It's made as a blank, am I right? And then, or do you actually make it like perfection? So when it's all put together, the first one you do like a prototype and then it's ready for work, or is it like everything's just a blank and then it's sort of finished, you know, sort of sharp, yeah. and polished, whatever. Well, that's, what, that's, that's why I, I, like I said, like with those or whatever, I make them like that first so I can get the shape right, the proportion, because that that's that's the bit I always find the tricky bit is the, you, you can have an idea, you know, draw it all out and everything. It looks really good on paper. 
then you physically get it in your hand and sort of go, oh, you know, that doesn't fit, that stabs me in the bottom of the hand, or that blade looks a bit, it doesn't look right kind of thing. So I get that bit right first. And then, yeah, I essentially, I just jump in and just sort of, in, in a nice little wing it, but sort of in a slightly more professional way than just, you know, having a go. And I just, <laughs> I make a prototype and if it works, for, like I say, if it works first time, brilliant. Like, I mean, that's very rare that happens. But, you know, you, you basically then, if you've got, say, I don't know, your spring doesn't quite work or it's, you know, when you're opening it, it it's jamming up somewhere. I then take the, the prototype piece apart, work out where it's been jammed up or whatever, or where, you know, where it's hitting or what, what's missing somewhere and then fix it basically. But obviously, again, like with the whole experience side of it, you sort of get an eye eventually to like how close certain things need to be. It's like when you're, when you've got um, a knife closed, obviously you've got a, a spring and a blade. You're obviously, you're very close to touching the, with the end of the blade into the spring, uh -huh. which, you know, obviously if you've got an edge on it, if it flicks in fast enough, springs obviously bounce. So it will try and, it'll try and bounce into the spring and it will set your edge off your uh, blade every single time you close the knife, which is obviously not a good thing. <laughs> uh, so, but then, like I said, with the experience, I mean, you start to learn, you know, like, oh, right, it needs at least one mil gap or two mil gap if the spring's going to be this strong or that strong. But then that's that's where you start getting into all the weird specifics of it all. And, and yeah, once, you, when, once you've got a working model, actually, I mean, does that become a template for repeating it time after time after time? That becomes like my final template in a sense then. So I'll then, before I put that knife completely together and then, you know, sell it on or just put it into a drawer so I've got it saved or whatever, uh, I take the whole thing apart because a knife works 100% without you having to do all the rounding off and everything and making it, you know, comfortable in your yeah. hand. So you can, you can have it as just, I've got one knocking around. Not sure anything, is it? You can have it as a, an, a, essentially a knife, but it's not, it's not been rounded or anything. It's just yeah. a, so that's essentially some wood and some brass nailed together. Uh, so you can get it to that point without having to do any of the fancy stuff and make it, you know, take it to the point where you then feel bad to smashing it back apart. So you know, all I then do <laughs> yeah. basically, once I know it works and I know it works under pressure and everything's fine, it's comfortable. I strip the whole thing apart and I then draw them down on uh, pieces of brass or a piece of steel or just usually use just a scrap piece of whatever I've got near me kind of thing. Uh, scribe it up and everything, make the actual final template. And then that just goes into my back to template for, for future reference, really. So that's more for like, obviously, my my handmade end of it. Whereas with the, the Arthur Wright stuff, obviously, we're limited to certain sort of patterns purely because we need things that you can produce in bulk. Yeah. So, so they they would then get right. turned into things like press tools and all that kind of stuff because you know you, you don't want to be sat if you get an order for a hundred lambs foot you do not want to be sat there drilling and grinding out a hundred lambs foot by hand yeah. from one piece of steel it's much nicer to get through a tool. But then that's that's the two ends of traditional knife making. You've got the bulk side of it, which is arthritis, and then you've got my side of it, which is the traditionals, like so custom. You consider, stuff, I guess. Do you consider your side? your hobby or is it definitely still work? Uh, no, I'd say it's, it's hobby for me really. Cause like, I mean, I, I, I love knife making in general. It's, and the, obviously knife making is my job. So I know I'm, I'm all right at it. And then <laughs> I do the, uh, the side bits, which obviously, you know, I can yeah. try anything then I'm not, I'm not limited to just, you know, Barlow, Lamfo, Etrimo. I'm not limited to just those. I can literally see a picture. Sort of on the inside, something I just got that looks really nice. I wonder what it would look like with this blade in us, and then I can just sort of keep myself busy, my mind busy by just having a go at that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and yeah. Uh, that's, I bought some of your prototypes off you, so I know yeah. um, that you do try lots of different things, um, yeah. especially something like this. Which yeah. I just find fascinating. Well, that's actually it's um it's a mishmash of two different knives. So how that one came about by I think it's Queen's Cutlery, I believe, do a similar pattern. Yeah. And there, was, there was something along the lines of they'd, they'd gone bust or something. There was some there was some long-winded story behind it. Could get hold of them basically. 
so a guy just wanted i think he just wanted one making basically because he really wanted one but wanted a sheffield one as as people Mm -hmm. do so we just you know sent us a load of pictures over and we just sort of made our our version of it and then that was that was that really with that six it was never planned obviously to be like a you know, a, a long running thing for us to make. Because to be honest with you, putting that saw blade in there was very tedious. <laughs> and, I was going to say, did you... <laughs> where... But... Go. where did you um... get that saw blade from? Where, how is that? Is that something you made, or was that brought in? Because no, I just... so, we... <laughs> uh, so that is essentially that's the saw. Um, so we we sort of did a bit of drawing and things, <laughs> sketching things like that. Sort of worked out how we. You know could fit that sort of shape into what parts we've got because the reason it's uh it's done in the candle and haft is because we've got you know parts for that in just thousands because w- why make something brand new when you've got a box full of them that you could adapt and you know make work for a job kind of thing if you're not going to be doing millions of them and it doesn't need mm-hmm. to be anything new so we adapted that to fit the candle and shaped haft and everything uh and then all it is it's uh just a bog standard uh, hacksaw blade that we then basically <laughs> had to sort of make this. And we did a lot of grinding, a lot of chopping around and drilling holes and all that, and just getting them to work, getting them to fit. And then, yeah, so basically you got a tried and tested hacksaw blade off the shelf, you know, from like B&Q or whatever. Uh, and then we adapted it, we made it work. But that's, uh, if you look at a lot of old school <laughs> cutlery like knife wire, there's a lot of that you can sort of see that certain things repeat a lot because it's just the same thing that they've gone yeah that'll work and they've ground the end off or whatever and it fits or blah blah whatever i mean like well like the the tackler uh, the farmer blade sorry a tackler is essentially a farmer's blade with the end just ground smooth yeah just ground smooth oh sorry ground smooth uh, uh, like a bigger radius ground onto it which gives it like a uh, a Whitler style look instead and that's all that is it's exactly the same tool because why would you make two yeah. tools when you could just grind the end of that one a bit more and it fits yeah but, that's clever that is, that is clever but it's but it's i mean that job. that's 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 more like a trick actually but that's still very clever and i suppose that's what tricks are it's clever way of thinking smarter to make things easier yeah to, to okay. make sure that so, right. finding solutions to uh, the different problems well, it's that, and it's it's down to money a lot of the time as well. Really, <laughs> <laughs> in any firm, because obviously you know tooling's well expensive. Like realistically, so if you're only going to be doing, I don't know, say if somebody comes to you with like, a, can you make me one of these, and I want ten of them, they might just come back for that ten. They might come back for ten thousand. You have no idea whether it's going to take off. Do it. I mean, we, we've had obviously a lot of people coming with the whole, I'm going to start a knife brand. And I mean, obviously, knife brands are a dime a dozen, sort of, you know, globally. Or whatever. Not all of them make it. Some of them do, some of them don't. So sometimes it's easier to not jump in and, you know, waste all that money on tooling that you yeah. might never ever use again. Because we, we've got tooling here that's been for jobs that are just, you know, they crop up every now and again. And you sort of think, was that £500 for the tool actually worth? Has it even generated yeah. for itself yet? Yeah, kind of thing. But that's, that's any business that really, you know, you you have to yeah. risk some and bits and whatever. But most of the time, if you can make it work without having to, that's just a no brainer. Really. What's your take, Ashley, on the modern um, slip joints that use the likes of M390 and carbon yeah. fiber? Is that somewhere you'd like to go down the line and make, you know, normal slip joints, but with yeah. a, a, an upgraded steel? You see, with that one, like, obviously, I, I, I thought you might pull one of his up, actually, because he's not a yeah. general. Yeah. 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 See, I, I, I think his knives are fantastic. I really do. They yeah. like the idea of, I mean, like, I'm a fan of things like, you know, modern slip joints, in a set, like spider cut, things like that, that yeah. are, a, you know, they operate and work in the same way a slip joint does. They're just done with modern stuff, because why why wouldn't you move on? Yeah. That's because, a can you? I mean, I think I really like, I mean, I'm not, what are the other things? I'm not a collector of knives. I have a collection of knives and yeah. I use knives, but I get more of my joy from actually like, you know, making the things as opposed to collecting them. But I can obviously, I appreciate other people's knives like that. Uh-huh. Um, 
but no, I think I think the modern stuff, I think it's really good, especially when you get to I mean with the likes of Spider Cut, when you get the customer the like customized stuff so you can, you know, swap scales out and things yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. So you can have one, you, you know, you don't have to buy ten knives to have ten different things. You could just buy ten sets of scales and all that kind of stuff. I do like the idea of that. And as well, like I said, modern steels nowadays are just getting better and better and better. So why wouldn't you use ridiculously good steels? I think there's a bit of a limit to it for, <laughs> it's going to sound, I don't know how it's going to come across, but like your average person, realistically, are they going to know the difference between just like two ballpark figures, 60 Rockwell and, and like 50 Rockwell, realistically? Absolutely not. So it's one of the, I, I do think there is a point where like, is it, is there a point to it? Obviously there is, because it's better, it, you know, it, it makes sense. But then I think that goes then down to your individual, cons- the, the end consumer. Is it worth them spending, you know, three, four hundred pounds because it's got this super steel? Uh, or would they be better suited with a 50 pound or 100 pound knife that will do just as much as that other one will do? It's just going to, you know, you might just have to sharpen it one, yeah. one time more than you're going to have to sharpen Sorry. it or whatever. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't, the steels ones, I think it's a bit of a preference, really. So I mean, I've used. Yeah some some dodgy steels from like for a year like you know old old knives and stuff that i've had kicking about you know given to me by my granddad and all that kind of stuff that are just 90 percent rust and things because they were made you know back in like the 50s or something and left in a drawer but they'll still sharpen up just fine and as long as they're clean and they've been used and they've got a proper edge on it you know you've got your edge angle right because i think that's what a lot of people get wrong is they yeah. don't sharpen the knife properly I mean, yeah, you can then go into your whole like, oh, 20 degrees is better than 30 degrees and all that. Um, but then again, that that again then becomes a preference. It depends what you're using it for. Because if you've got one of these, you know, when people obviously sharpen knives up to like the the chef yeah. standard, you know, they chop it yeah. through uh, like uh, toilet tubes and things. That's really good. But then if mm-hmm. you're doing really, really heavy work, that's not necessarily the edge that you you want because that's a very sort of I don't know delicate edge that can about work. eleven degrees. I can wrap it up. <laughs> yes. it? And this is I, yeah. I agree with Ashley there hundred percent. Everything is about angle. You want to work and not you go put yeah. a ten degree on that. Yeah, that's great. That split the atom, but it also yeah. split. It also folds within just looking yeah. at it. Put you're, you're it's got so much use. Yeah, so, it's done. Isn't well, it? It's one of those. Eh? If it's in your pocket. You do what you want to, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, if I if I sell a knife and it's got a twenty degree on it, or whatever you're going to put a ten degree on it, knock yourself out. That's 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 up to you, really, as far as I'm concerned. Though. But it's just I just tend, I prefer to put like a bit of a a jack of all trades edge on it. It's mm. sharp. It will still do what you yeah. need it to do. Because I mean, your edges are by no means thick, Ashley. I mean, you've oh, got I, a hollow, I know work. <laughs> you've got a hollow grind. Well, that's just again. That's down to just what I've got. Uh, so, yeah. like machine wise and stuff here. Um, like most of my machines, I mean, this drill next to me. These are all. It's all pre-war. What I've got. It's all you know, 1940s and below. Big uh, three-fed grinder <laughs> mills. And but I've got a, a massive surplus of old cutlery stuff because you know Sheffield had a lot of that kicking about. Uh, and like when people like uh, Trevor Ablett passed away, we. But basically, every cutler in the city, to be quite honest with you, jumped on that like a vulture and just stripped it <laughs> <in> away. <laughs> because it was basically spare parts for everything that we'd got. So we, you know, we I've got wheels and things like that, and stones and stuff from all that. And <coughs> realistically, if, if I was to try and work a proper grindstone from you know 10 inch, 12 inch down to where I would need to replace it. I should yeah. imagine it'd be quite a bit older by the time I get to that point. <laughs> so it just, it just old stuff just lasts. You see, as far as something like that, is there? Have you seen one of these? Have you had one? Had one in your I've, hand? I've not seen one in person, no. I, but I've I've seen. I follow him on Instagram and all that, and I've seen your uh, your posts and reviews and things. Uh-huh. And they do look. I can tell you one if you do like. want to have a look at it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, I'll send you one if you want to have a look. They're worth, they're worth a look, I think. Yeah. Harry, no. Harry, hold that up again. Ashley, can I get your opinion on this? Because I'm alone in the room here. That's an ugly right. fat spear. I'm sorry, but that's too fat. That's an ugly fat spear. You see, this is, this is a proper spear. This <laughs> is a proper spear. Okay? This the, is yours. 
And it's a proper spin. Yeah. That one fat and ugly. No, 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 no. Uh, Ashley, Justin's only admin. Oh, I said, don't need to distress. He's, he's only the technician. It's, it's no see, problem. That's just down to pattern stuff because, like, that that kind of spear, I'm not a mad, mad keen on it when it's in a, a thin haft. So if you if your handle is really small and that just bulges yeah. out, not as keen. But in the dogleg pattern that that's in, that works really well. No, I yeah. think that's purely down to a, it depends. I, I mean, really, actually, a nice fat spear is actually quite a good, very usable, Damn. like, shape of knife. I mean, I, I personally prefer, like, more pointy ends. So, like, a bit like the trapper style or whatever. I prefer yeah. the tip point because, you know, oh, really, you know, when you're opening boxes and things like that, I just like having a, a nice sharp point. So I don't yeah. accidentally close the knife in and stab whatever I've just bought, usually, because <laughs> I'm quite a candid learner. But if, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's down to, but again, it's personal preference that one. I'd say. But see, you, see, you disappoint me, Ashley. You disappoint me. I mean, <laughs> I'm alone again in the room. Yeah. Can, can I, I just? Know. I've got to ask Ashley. I know, I know it's a bit early in the show, guys, and you're all going to go mad at me, Ashley. Real quick, because I always get excited. What's your favourite sack? I don't. Re I genuinely don't really have one. I, I don't carry them to be honest. <laughs> I'm a, I'm literally, I'm a single blade person. I just yeah. like having just asset. I mean, the, the one I carry like at the minute, and it's off you. It might upset some people. Uh, I was, I was given this by a, by a friend or whatever a while back. It's just a, a rough rider uh, razor, and I, but I really like. It's got the point. It's got the uh, obviously the pocket opening bit for you know if I've got my hands full or whatever I can flick it open. And it's a small, comfortable knife that sits in your pocket. When they start getting wider and wider and wider with the more tools that you've got on it, mm, yeah. And I just, I, I just stop. I mean, I've got, I've got, I've got a few of them and things like that, and I do use them. I just rarely carry them. I don't really have a massive. I mean, I quite one of my favourite ones. I probably actually say is just the bog standard, simple, single blade and a bottle opener. Because what you can't do with a single Phantom. blade. You can have a uh, you can have a beer and just sort of wait, can't you? So that's, that's an easy way of getting it. If you if you can't cut your way out of it, you can drink your way out of it. That's what I <laughs> well, I, I, you can't disagree with that one, Ash. That, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, Ashley, have you tried the Rough Rider Barlow version in V two? Uh, no, I've, I've I've seen it, but it's never because see now this is going into the what I was saying earlier with this swell the blade on the end of that and the yeah. half. I think they look a bit odd. You see, don't say, well, they don't look it, bad. It's, I think it looks, it's incredibly it looks comfortable. Hands and then you suddenly go like that for instead of just going keep keeping for the lines. It's a bit justification. Thank you, Ashley. We can finish the show now. I am justified. <laughs> Justin is right. Could you, would it be possible if you could just give us a wee run around your workshop to let us see the different I stations you have set up? So <laughs> there's set at the minute. So this is where I do most of my stuff. So I don't know, I'm trying to work out this. Upright grinding machine. Again, this is this is down to the whole my workshop is not as high tech as a lot of people's are. So I'm having to sort I have to make do with what I've got. So at the minute it's currently if I can get it right. That's currently set up just with a little angle jig to put angles on the end of some wood that we're doing uh, doing a, a run of basically. Uh, a little tiny uh, surface grinder, for skimming <laughs> stuff off, obviously. Bandsaw, cheap as chips, one that just cuts wood. That's. I, I don't go. I don't have any super high tech stuff, as I say. Some yeah. small contact wheels, with various uh, extractor bits attached to them and everything. None of it looks like it works because of the amount of dust in this place. But, you know, it does. What? Uh, and then, oh god. As I said, the most useful piece of equipment is this. Uh, it's a, an engraving machine for putting, obviously, lettering and things like that and stuff. Uh, but we use it as a makeshift, very small milling machine for uh, milling things like scales flat. See, this is only like my upstairs room. So that's my view for the day user. That's my, obviously, my study and everything and my, uh, my workbenches and everything. One of my favourite knives to collect is GEC. And the reason I like GEC is because they use a lot of old machines making traditional patterns. And, and that excites me more than it does a, you know, a modern knife, even as beautiful as this is. Yeah. 
yeah. this is a collector's piece for me as such, rather than something that's got a you know a little bit of character, a little bit of beauty, and I know it's made by hand. I li I personally I like GC knives and things like that. You know, I like that style of knife because it's essentially it's my my style of knife, isn't you know mm -hmm. what I do. Uh -huh. My only bugbear with it is yes, it is handmade, but it's not as handmade as I think some people sort of think it is. No, yeah, yeah. So it's not I'm not taking away from the fact that they are a bit, they are still fantastic knives, you're not gonna be wrong by any means or whatever. Uh, it's just it's things like I mean like riveting the pins on stuff like that. Uh -huh. That then it's a it's a very good I would say it's I mean don't get me wrong like I understand why they've done it and everything like that it makes your life a lot easier. Um, so they obviously use proper rivets which are machines. Put if you've watched any of the videos on their like yeah. their website uh -huh. things like they put in by little foot pressed uh, machines and things like that which you know yes. works and every time all the time which is why why would you not want that? My only argument with it is when you then say it's traditional, traditional, realistic to me anyway, is done with a stuff like hammer, that. Yeah. That's a tack hammer for obviously using tacks. It's not a knife making hammer. But I don't know whether it'll come up on the screen. Got grid on it, yeah. Yeah, so that grid, I've basically I've filed that in, I've dremeled that in. And what, what we, we just call them cut face hammers. Uh, and all that does is when we're knocking up the pins, so we, when we've got obviously a flat pin, because our pins come in uh, just lengths of brass brass or nickel wire, whatever, uh -huh. you, uh, in various sizes. And we literally just prop the piece to length. And then on the stiddy, these little holes here uh, are basically just little recessed holes, you know, in, in the stiddy, so that when you hit on one side, it, it keeps a little bit of pin still sticking up. So that when you then turn the knife over, you've got a little proud piece of uh, yeah. pin still there. We hit them with the upset face hammers, and as we hit that, it obviously spreads and knocks a pin about, and everything widens it all off and makes uh -huh. it like a, a, a traditional rivet. And then we just, you know, you have to you have to do that by hand. You have to be careful because you have to you will split it and crack the wood or whatever if you go wrong. But that's just part of the whole. But that's the traditional way of doing it, which. That's my only bugbear against it is just this certain bit that I just think, yes, they are traditional in a sense, but I wouldn't class it as being traditional. But yeah, it is I, I I Yeah, I, I would think accept that's more that. I, I've actually bought more of your knives in the last two yeah. years than I bought GEC because right. that is the difference to me is yeah. the traditional side of it, plus the fact that UK, which I'm always right. trying to promote. I actually think when, when you do stuff like wrong obviously you know you try not to do stuff wrong but when you do do stuff right it, it adds a bit of like you say it adds a bit of character if if your stag's slightly wonky or whatever yeah then because you know, nobody else's knife's going to be the same often no. often actually's a hero mate honestly <laughs> because no 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 and i'm serious because these guys know i'm a, I'm a big traditionalist like, i love doing all, all, all. Any work I do, any sharpening to do, anything like that, it's all, all done by hand. Everything we do, if it's like yourself, just doing a bit of filing or, 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 or anything, it's all done by, by hand. Um, yeah. And it's it's so satisfying. But what you do, you you and what 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 you said about GEC is right. They're a fantastic knife, but they're not traditional. They're, they're, they're like the perfect blend, I would say. Though, to be fair, yeah. <clears throat> like I said, I've I have no problem whatsoever with GEC. I don't like I said, it might just come across that. Way. No, it's no, we, we, I think we do that. Just, I just, I just think that what you're saying is correct, though. You are still a traditional, probably one of the very few traditional what you're designing well, and making. With, in Sheffield now, we are we're becoming a dying breed in Sheffield specifically. To me, what is four four big, big firms, if you want to class it as that, that, that still do it all, but then everybody does a bit of different stuff. Yeah, we we are. We're on his way out <laughs> in a sort of nice but not nice way. Well, keep on making yeah. knives like the way you're making knives, Ashley, and, and and there'll always be a market for them. I mean, Paddy and I are probably your two biggest pains in the ass. It has to be said because we're we're the ones who keep on nudging you on on. And, you know, there's a few others that do it. But there's a few others. I've stopped of late because I've got a couple off you. You've been very generous, but we're the ones we're the ones that keep on going. Can I have that one? Can I have that? You know, yeah. you know, you know the seagulls from Finding Nemo. Yeah. We're going mine, mine, 
You know, they always get that, that was the that's... Thing that was that you two are the pretty much like the Wild West, where you're the fastest two commenters. Are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always I've a race been, between like, him and me. <laughs> I've, I've, I've worried before, like, does this come across as like a bit of favoritism? But it's one of the you two are just a lot of the time, it's, it's just a case of. First Whoever comments on first gets it, basically. That's it. There is no, it's just if it goes up and you want it and you're willing to have it, that's it. That's as far as I'm telling you. Know. Well, it is. And it has become almost a one upmanship thing because Paddy still hasn't forgiven me for the abalone. You know? Do not bring that knife up. As it happens, <laughs> I can clean <him> slightly. <laughs> so that arrived the other week so you your abalone is here and is ready to uh ready to start making it it will not the be show is long. over just stop now <laughs> <laughs> he's a happy man but oh. that's what we that's what i was saying we, we every now and again we get if i get one or patty gets one it's a case of the, the next message is on whatsapp to say guess what i got from <laughs> we're, we're we're like kids at a sweet shop kind of thing but uh Dan, Dan, unfortunately, is still trying to get in on your list, it has to be said. So keep your eye out for him. Because... Oh, I'll I, yeah, I, 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 you two know I'm not, like I said, I'm not a knife collector either. I just sell, I just sell them a pair of them. That's, that's, that's it. I do have a very few select, and I would like an Ashley Harrison. So oh, I will be harassing you. But... That, 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 is the, that is the beauty about it. it it's, I mean, Paddy put me on to you and just said, keep... I mean, he sold me one of one of the ones that you'd set, sold him just out of pity, more or less than anything else, because I was so I was I was so desperate to get one. So that was that was that one, I think. That uh, oh, yeah, which yeah. I have to say, that is it's not rosewood patty, isn't it? It's or yeah, the yeah, I think it is. Yeah. It, it's still it's one okay. of my favorites, but but since then, it's it's just gone from bad to worse. So it it. it, it <laughs> And I, and I mean, Ash, I, I was, that was the Blue Trapper. I was the, I was coming in on the Blue Trapper just a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was just unbelievable, that one. But it's, I don't know, it's, it, 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 it's just lovely to see when you're doing something slightly new or odd. Um, it, I mean, that, the native one that you dropped a couple yeah. of days ago, that native pattern, I'm still not sure about them on the fence about it, but it's so unusual. Yeah. I, I've never seen it before, so where'd that come from? So that one, that one came about with um, a guy in America. Um, now he basically wanted four, four knives making, all in stag. And that's not uncommon when, like, when Americans order, because obviously, you know, shipping and stuff like that is yeah. expensive. But generally, they, they, they buy more than one, which, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to complain. Um, so he, he ordered a handful of, and he just sent me a few photos of different styles and things. And he said, can you make me your version of this, this, and this? And I think in the end, it was a... Uh, it was a sow belly trapper, a spear point, but like a long spear point. I think it was a four inch spear point. Uh, that native pattern, and I think it was a it was either a lamb foot or a standard ball. I think it was a lamb foot. Um, so yeah, he just sent me a load of different photos of different native patterns, kind of, and I just sort of ended up at that one uh, with the sort of sow belly handle on it. But, but I get what you say when you look at it. It's it's a bit marma, so you know a lot of people have sort of said oh, it's a bit you know it works when it's shut because it it has nice lines when it's shut but then when it's open it's a bit sort of i don't know count dooku's lightsaber from star wars it <laughs> yes kind of, it know, is that's it weird. yeah with that hurt but when you, then yeah. you got it in your hand it's incredibly comfortable wow. because it fits the sweat you know it fits the curve you beautifully and it's it feels really nice uh, but yeah, the 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 fallout portion ended up with the I found <coughs> out, and I guess it's nice that it's going out on this. Uh, he was selling them on then uh, in America for like five and six hundred pounds. Wow! I was selling, yeah, and I was selling them to him for like sort of you know my standard price of like sort of seventy eighty. Yeah. Which, which, I, mean, I don't know if you you know if you're gonna buy them as a as a consumer and, and sell them on it a little bit of a bump. Fair enough, because they're in America. I get that. You know, it's hard to get all of them. It's a Sheffield. But it will add a bit of. I can understand. I understand that. But five hundred quid is a bit of a job because I don't want them people coming obviously to me going. I bought this for five hundred pound. It's not really much of a five hundred pound knife, but <laughs> and then I'm trying to buy it, sell it for five hundred pounds. <laughs> yeah, you, like, Ashley, in America, they're absolutely a lot of them are now trying to get your knives. Because they can't buy GEC, yeah. because when a when a GEC sold at say a hundred pounds, 
the next yeah. day they're on uh, uh, Instagram or whatever yeah. for 300. Do you no, know what I mean? Okay. It's just it's crazy. I get why people, you know, people are just making trying to make money, and everybody like yeah. everybody alive is trying to make money, aren't they? But yeah, I don't know. I just I don't I don't like that. I like no, mine. No, no. Uh, I'd rather mine end up in you know people like yourself, or people that will actually not only have them but use them. Because yeah, uh -huh. I'd, I I understand obviously. Yeah, I do make some knives that look really nice and they look good in a drawer and all this kind of. And I get that they show that, and I get that yeah. collectors, you know, like to have. Yeah. A collection of pristine knives. I understand that perfectly, but I also I spend a lot of time making sure that mine are nice, sturdy. You can yeah. go out and you can hammer the life out of them, and all be well. You will still have a knife at the end of the day, kind of thing. I mean, I've got some. Uh, I mean, he'll know who he is just by mentioning to me, but he, uh, whenever he orders something off me, and he's been one of my longest customers going, he will always buy two knives. So you buy, and they're always identical copies. So they're always one goes in his drawer, and the no, other one goes in his back. Which I, I mean, don't mind because obviously that's twice the uh, twice the dive for me. But, but yeah, yeah I, you know, at least he's doing it properly, kind of thing. Yeah, it? I mean, I don't have a lot of safe queens, but I, on the other hand, actually, I'm like a Mr. Average man. I cut mm. a box open maybe once a week, and most yeah. of the time I'm just opening packages of knives. That's yeah. what I get my knives for. <laughs> But I mean, then I get something like this, and I wouldn't want to use this because one, it was your first prototype of this, wasn't it? Yeah, because that, that was <laughs> another one. What I was talking about earlier, I kept every single time I was making those, I kept yeah. getting something slightly wrong on it, and I just kept smashing the end of that blade up. And obviously, it would have been a thin hollow ground. That one, it took a long time to get that one fully off the ground, mainly yeah. because I would close it, it'd smash the end up, I'd hear it do it. And I just fling it in a drawer and just ignore it for another six months. Oh, because <laughs> you just, you know, that was it. I was just, yeah. I mean, we've been watching your the progress of your, of your Damascus knives as you've been releasing them. So, Hattie's got two. Yeah, I've got that that trapper, which is just amazing. But it relates to something I wanted to ask you about, which is about the metal for the blades themselves. And it's something that it's just sticking in my head. Do you? Do you forge the blades or do you just get the blanks and work? No, I, I, what I, way does that work? I'm, so yeah, I'm I'm nowhere near talented enough to be uh, doing forge work. It's something it's something I've always like I've always wanted to have a go at. And I did have I, I tried making and I need I nearly succeeded. Uh I tried making some uh Makumigana, you know, the uh I think it's brass nickel and copper, I think if I remember it's a while ago I did it now. Yeah. When you basically make Damascus but using those metals so you still get the pattern and stuff as close to forging as i sort of get really because i i've not really i've got big furnaces and things like that but our our firm wasn't kitted up for that kind of stuff really and i i just buy my uh, damascus in through other uh, people you know that obviously forge it themselves and sell it as billets basically just because that's just easier for me and then i obviously get it as a forged piece of you know rough scabby steel or whatever i mean whatever length bar they send it me as a you know, as a bent up piece, I basically then just skim it all flat and everything and do all the uh, annealing on it and everything like that, normalise oh. it, <clears throat> and then basically just treat it as a piece of, like, ground steel stock or whatever, and then, so basically I do everything minus forging, essentially. Right. So like it, from, I like, like the, your, your typical O1, what would it be he treated to? Uh, so my tr O1 is usually around 56, 58, but this is another one of those it's it's an awkward on this because i don't go as technical as a lot of people do because i wasn't trained like that so i'm trained quite literally as bad as i mean the guy that trained me you was a guy called keith and uh, when i first started he was like in his 70s i think um so he, I, be, I, I learned about colors so my yeah. temp, my yeah. morning mm -hmm. i go up to you know your cherry hot your white hot and all that kind of stuff and I watch the forge and I watch the whole, you know, when everything blends, that's kind of stuff. And then when it comes out to tempering, I then go through all, you know, like your straws, your plums, your blues and everything like that. So I, I, I do it all like that, essentially. I have got hardness files and things, obviously, sometimes you're never quite sure, is it actually, is it hardened, hardened, or is it just sort of yeah. toughened it kind of thing? And, you know, you get the odd, the odd spring here and there or whatever that breaks or whatever <coughs> because you've not quite got it right. But... I that's then on me and I usually just you know if it, if it has happened which is again it's rare it does 
you know, you just offer a replacement for it because yeah, uh -huh. I, this is this is a handmade thing. Sometimes stuff just doesn't work first time. Yeah. You'd like it, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, nice. No, um, again, like I said, with the with the whole factory aspect of it, all of my stuff that I've got here is really, really much older than me by by a long shot. So yeah. it's all old school by eye. Even that, like I mean, centering the blades and, and doing all your uh, you know the joints on the back of the spring and everything like that yeah all that obviously i know like nowadays when you see on instagram and things there's people with uh like uh little measurement jigs and all sorts and everything <laughs> so they close it you know it's, it's all set up to two and three thousand or whatever i yeah. just use it with my finger <laughs> basically it's like you know, if it's like that it's i could i could tell it's smooth and then when it's shut is it smooth is it not is it sitting up ever so slightly can i get a nail on it yeah. and i do it by that because, like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd like to I just make knives for like you know the, the average man kind of thing. And realistically, is the average Joe going to know the difference between the spring being two thousandth up or two thousandth below? An engineer might do or whatever. Fair enough. Yeah. I get that, you know. But your average person's not going to know. And plus the fact that when you're not going to that highest end of hardness for a, a blade, and this is just my eyes. That makes it harder to sharpen. That's something that's about, you know, say 58 is easier yeah. to sharpen. Yeah. And that's got to be the thing. If you've got a pocket knife, you'd want to spend a day sharpening it. Exactly. Well, that, that's the, another one of it. I mean, that's my dad's argument with it. The harder your steel gets, I mean, like with uh, like stainlesses and things like that, fantastic steels. Yeah. But like I say, you spend a lifetime sharpening the thing. And just hoping yeah. that it's sharp for long enough and you don't accidentally hit a nail or something near any piece of wood that you you uh -huh. find you know. what's the favorite what's your favorite knife that you've ever made you see i don't think i've made i, I would say i've probably not made it yet because good answer Oh, good. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree. <clears throat> this is one of those right, that like, they just go, oh, look, look at how high and mighty it is. And like, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's an honest answer. Because I think it's because I do, obviously, like, I, I pride myself on, on my work and things like that. And I was always told, like, by my granddad and my dad and everything like that, as you raised it. And, you know, you can take this one or two ways. You could always be better, basically. Like always, like they, you, yeah. you could always do. You know, it, sounds, it sounds a bit, you know, like you got ideas above your station and all that kind of stuff, and it sounds a bit whatever. But I think I'm. I always find a fault somewhere, <clears throat> or I'll, I'll probably spend time looking for them. To be fair, and I always think, oh, that could have been slightly better, or <clears throat> slightly bigger, or slightly smaller, whatever. And I, don't, I think that just sort of always keeps me off. I think that's why I don't carry one of my own knives as well. Because if if I, I don't know, say say I carry that rough rider and there's something wrong with it, I didn't do it, so it doesn't bother me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've made some knives that I've really liked. I will give it that. I mean, some of the some of the daggers that I've done, like the oh, uh, the <clears throat> the fluted. I'm gonna have to go get a drink in a minute. My throat is so dry. The fluted. Um, I can't even remember what it was made. I think it's maple or something. A fluted handle, one of those. I'd, uh, there was a guy on, oh, there's a, a well, quite a famous master smith, to be fair, in America called Kyle Royer. I don't know if you, if you do know it, if you've heard of him. He makes a lot of um, Bowie knives, uh, but like these, these you know, ridiculous ones that are worth ridiculous thing, yes. thousands yeah. of pounds. And his work is phenomenal. But he does uh, a lot of uh, like tutorial bits and videos and stuff like that. You know, he helps people learn how to, I think he runs like classes and things like that as well. Uh -huh. he did like a bit of a mini he, he was making a dagger with that fluted handle and everything uh, and he ran everybody through how to do it basically so i just watched his videos and learned how to do it uh, and i made all the all the jigs and things like that that would fit all my machines and everything like that to sort of mark everything up so you it's all done but it's all like hand shaped but you have to make um you have to make a marking wheel which i have got somewhere and it's essentially just uh, something like a circle and it's just got crosses across so that when you then you have you have like a, a screw through the middle a threaded rod through the middle of it that you thread your handle onto and then through these lines you basically then can put notches all the way around the handle in incremental 
Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you, you sort of draw a lot of stuff, make a lot. It's it's a bit long winded, but it makes sense when you do it. It's, it's hard to explain. It's one of those annoying ones. But it, I'm, I've got it on my Instagram actually. How I, how I walk through it is uh, if anybody is interested. I would say, I'd say yeah, I'd probably say that's actually one of my one of my favourites. If I, if I had to pick like a, a singular yeah. knife, that's a noble, that's that's a noble choice. choice. I like that one. <laughs> I think I'm in for an order of one of your daggers. I suppose my thing is I don't I don't have any knives that I have up on plaques, but the dagger yeah. is the one thing that I would put up on a plaque. Yeah. On the I mean, wall. I've, I've had a word with this about with my partners that I really want I want a dagger clock. <laughs> you know, just, oh! just 12, oh. 12, 12 daggers working away as a clock. And I Six think I've nearly got the green light. Just... I'm not sure, but I'm working my way towards it. But uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Actually, we, just to get it to take it a wee bit off the knives just for a second. Yep. Are you a family man? And what's your family think of knife making? Are they going to follow along with you? Uh, well, I mean, at the minute, I'm, I'm childless at, at the minute. Uh, but I mean, well, you know, ideally, I would love to have, you know, my son, daughter, whatever, uh -huh. alongside as, as I've done with my dad and he's done with his yeah. dad and with his dad. Because he, he's a nice, I mean, me and my dad get along like fantastically well. We always have done a uh -huh. bit. As a family and everything like that, it's it's been, a, well, it's been part of our family for quite a while. I mean, the Sheffield side of us anyway. And uh, my partner's from Hull. So I'm sort of dragging her down to normal society. <laughs> um, Here's another little offer for you, and you can do what you like with it. Um, I would love Michael, your, it's Michael, your dad, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I would love if Michael wants to do a video of the, the main workshop where you do the Arthur Wright yeah. knives and sort of take, yeah. take a take a walk through from beginning to end and then show yeah. a couple of the knives you have for sale. And I would put that up on my video channel because I, yeah. I really am promoting British makers. Yeah. I don't want this oh. to die because this is something I'm, I'm really passionate about. <laughs> I mean, like we've said to you before, if you know, you, you ever find yourself on this side of the pond or whatever, you're more than welcome to come in. So, you know, we're, we're always open. I that will. Side. Look, we're already planning. We're already planning a Paddy, pa Paddy and Pals on tour. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you know, but it's we're going to have to think of a different title because Paddy and Pals on tour, if you do the initials, it's Peapot. So, I mean, that really doesn't work very well. But... Uh, <laughs> well, that <looks> good, <laughs> I know peapot on a t-shirt isn't going to work brilliantly, you know. But uh, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> all we all we need is for all the restrictions they're lifting and the madness of the prices of the ferry. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, Patty and I will pile into a car and come across. We'll, <laughs> we'll get we'll get we'll meet Dan halfway up England, up the spine of England, and then come and do the guided tour, there, Ashley. So oh, that definitely, so I'd love to do. I mean it's. <laughs> I'd say it'd be anticlimactic. It's not because obviously I know you, you lot will be absolutely you know, off, off your tits in here, kind of thing. But <laughs> 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 so, but no, be more Bob's than drunk as such. Yeah, sure, yeah totally. Um, the years, obviously, at one point, everybody will have been trained exactly the same yeah. to, to within a degree. Whereas mm -hmm. once you've got to this sort of stage now where there's, you know, more modern ways of doing certain things <clears throat> and you know, you, you, we're now fewer and far between. You might not necessarily have time to sit and, you know, be, be above your apprentice for six hours just watching them do. We have to, I mean, a lot, like with my apprentice, therefore, I'll just basically say to her, look, you know, at the end of the day, I'll show you how to do it. This is how I do it. This is how I would like you to do it because it works and I know it works. But if for any reason you can't quite do it that way but you can do it this way and it works exactly the same and we get the exact same product at the end of it and you know it doesn't take three hours to do that but it only takes 10 minutes to do it the other way whatever you you find your own your own way of doing it but that's the handmade thing every single maker somewhere will do something slightly different mm -hmm. yeah but still the same job does beth make a full knife uh she she has done she's made three start to finish so far uh, but at the minute she is <clears throat> well that's that's one of those uh she basically makes the knives up to this point now uh -huh. so we are completely fully working opening and closing everything's centered i think well that's that's why this one's up here because it's not centered uh but yeah she basically makes fully working knives. Uh -huh. well, uh, and she's just now starting the 
learning to round every or the hafting process as we call it uh -huh. to, uh, to round it all. and that's essentially the last process so she's has she's only been here for two yeah two years going on for now well um, I that's yeah we oh, we've, we've been putting her through a paces blessed to like she's not she's been working yeah. for a month like <laughs> and she's yeah she's got to if she ever wants yeah. to do a do an knife up and look i i'm all for helping the new ones i would happily yeah. buy a knife off her and i'm sure justin would too but Definitely. just to give her a little bit of a hand yeah. and it doesn't if it's coming to me it's not going to have to be perfect <clears throat> i'm not going to criticize it it'll just be you know one of her knives yeah well i'll, I'll put that to her and i'll uh yeah, I'll let her have a go at it but, but it, it would be there. actually it would actually be nice patty to if, i mean if, if if beth is going to be the future in, in many ways of, of yeah. making it, knives it, you need some of her rough and ready knives for then in five ten years time yeah definitely. see yeah but it's even but track it's the history of her as a yeah. as a knife maker and as a sort of the inheritor of the tradition or whatever else if you want to get really poncy about it um that that would be a really nice nice way to do it it would be kind of cool that... i mean do you still like bend the pin when when you're putting one in i mean I, I guess it's not very often but do you still ever just get it and think oh just sort of knock it out again and start again or is yeah. it just quite, quite regularly because at the end of the day like, all you've got to do is like you know you've just got to hit at a slightly different angle and it just glances off slightly right and then it bends over it. but then you know we, we've got i mean like this knife for example like i don't i don't know if it shows up or not with the centering of the blade is obviously quite off on this one mm -hmm. but that's why this yeah. is up here it's a one yeah. to expect that quite a lot of the time isn't necessarily the blade itself that's bent as you knock the knife up obviously the, you, you've got two pieces of essentially free floating material that are trying to do this because your pin's trying to do this because you're hitting it with hammers which is you know it's going to move uh so be part of the part of the process of actually making them is unbending stuff so we we would get the knife to pretty much where it is now we when you knock all the knife up you would not be able to sort of close that without it jamming because obviously it's now too tight because we've hit it too much we then get his hammers and everything and we hit these sides of the blades to rock the, the knife top. free again sometimes you get it perfect and you will literally knock the knife up and it'll be beautiful and everything and that does happen a fair bit because like i say you know after a bit you get used to hitting it just the right amount of times or whatever but then at the same time equally you know we're, we're not machines we aren't perfect we will get stuff wrong stuff happens you have dodgy days and stuff like that where you just you know you something snaps and you want to go up basically <laughs> you know it's not it's not always it's always sunshine and smiles eh? so it's i i think that's that's always one of my things where you know when you see programs like say forge in fire things like that yeah a lot of people think it's like super exciting and everything's going on and I, it's not like i mean today i've literally been stood on this drill here next to it for about six and a half hours just drilling some wood for some parting tools that we do because we make other bits as well as pocket knives. So it's not all me just sitting at a bench and making all these fancy, lovely knives you see and all that. We we sometimes yeah. just say the boring stuff. So and you're telling you're you're telling me that that you don't work to a throbbing heavy rock beat in the background. Oh well, I've got my. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't tend to go outside and hit bicycle for any of my knives either but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no stuff stuff goes wrong a lot more than you you'd think it does we we that's the whole again that's the traditional side of it. that's where you get your quirks and your you know well your character i would say in, in a knife because mm. everybody is slightly different you know i mean at the minute we with obviously stan show passing away like fairly recently lots of knives obviously that are filed and things like that that look very stan shoreish will pop up and people have come to us and been like is this stan and we can tell by you know is it his is it not because we've seen that much of his work or you know we do the maltese cross pattern as well so we can tell yeah. if it's our work but that's down to the the character side of it or whatever. we can always like a lot of firms in sheffield share the same parts we we make a lot of parts for a lot of companies like Tre trevor's stuff if you ever look at trevor avalet's thing uh -huh. His pruners and all that kind of stuff. If you then look at our peach pruners at Arthur Eyes, they're exactly the same because we all shared the same parts. 
Yeah. He just makes them how he makes them. We make them how we make them. But that again, that's down to your character side of it and everything. That's that's what makes traditional what was, marriage traditional, I think, in a sense. Could you explain who Stan Shaw was quickly, or if that's possible? Yeah, so well, as as brief as it was to go, Stan Shaw was I mean, I'm I'm what's classed as a, a little little mester, uh, as yeah. as Stan was as well, and as Trevor was, and as Michael May and things like that. So we're basically small sort of individual workers that work out of another person's uh firm that's so like obviously I'm, I'm making my stuff out of a right technically so that's my end of it he was basically stan was the i guess the the most famous of us essentially he just became this super yeah superstar i guess you could say uh because he made some yeah, he made some fantastic knives. i mean the hallamshire knives and things like that that are in in uh, the museums and things if nobody's ever seen or even heard of, like, you know, if followers have never heard of the Hallamshire knife, just Google the Hallamshire knife, and that should explain to you why people know what, what Stan Shaw's work is, basically. That's, that's, that's the big use. multi-bladed one, is it? Yeah, that's the, the one with the, I think it's the yeah, most yeah. bladed or something, that's like I say, it's, I mean, it's huge. Yeah, it's, it's, beautiful. it's gorgeous in person. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I guess it's just the, the, the most famous of us. <laughs> Stan Shaw, brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, it, there's a couple of nice videos up on YouTube. If you type in Stan Shaw, there's some lovely videos of chats with him, which was just fantastic. Yeah, the only thing that sort of he, ne he never wanted an apprentice from what I could get, he just never, which is a shame. So it's sort of some yeah. of the knowledge oh. things that he would have had will have died with him, unfortunately, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah. But then you've got people along the lines of, let's say, Stephen Cocker, who make the same sort of traditional patterns as what Stan did. Because again, yeah. like, again, there's that many different patterns and stuff. Like my preferred are just standard single blade working knives that that look a bit yeah. fancy if, if should the need arise. Whereas like Stephen, I know he makes predominantly so we're, you know, friends of Stephen and everything like that. As all the cutlery firms will stick together now. Yeah, Stephen Cocker, I've seen some of his knives on Instagram, and, and you're right, he does. I mean, he I've, I've seen him do. He does a lot of stockmans, but the multi yeah. the multi bladed yeah. kind of things. Yeah. yeah. So that they're again, you know, really traditional old school, not not just synonymous with Sheffield, because you know everywhere used to make stuff like that. But he that's that was sort of predominantly the kind of stuff standard. So things like horseman, uh -huh. and all that kind of that that end yeah. of multi blade sort of more fancy stuff. He, he he didn't. I mean, he did obviously make single blade stuff, but he, a lot of his stuff is more sort of leaning towards older school patterns. But then obviously he's. I mean, what, he was 90 odd when he died. So he's Good been doing gosh. it all before. So he's, he's pushing back to sort of an end of the 1800s, essentially, will have been Jeez. the patterns that were, yeah. will have been what he was, you know, sort of trained on because, you know, the cutlers that he would have been taught by will have been alive during the, the 1800s by the time they got to the end of there. So he's, that's amazing. He, you know, He's, it's a shame he just never, you know, never did take an apprentice because I, I should imagine a fair bit of knowledge has been like, he still work, you know, you can still work it back. I mean, I've made some, like, and Stephen obviously as well, we've made some multi-blade stuff because you you take an old multi-blade knife apart and you work out how it works. So it's, it's still there, but I shouldn't imagine, like you said, like I was saying earlier with tricks and things like that, he'll have known that many tricks just to make it <laughs> a lot easier. You know, like, which it's a shame, but then that's that's traditional handmade type stuff or whatever if if it's not shared it's not carried on your dad actually makes the multi-bladed ones don't he the show sort of piece oh, that, ones <laughs> yeah that, he doesn't make like many of those but he's, he, he made that as a he just wanted to know whether or not he could get every single knife blade <laughs> that we make into one knife so he spent <laughs> i mean that, that was in the drawers for like years like he just sort of do five minutes on it and then put it away again for another month and then do five minutes on it he, he, he basically a collector saw it it was on the side we'd been talking about it and so we just got it out and he'd come to pick up an eye and the collector basically came in and was sort of went yeah, what, what, what what's that kind of and he <laughs> just said oh i've been working on this and he was basically just going Running <laughs> 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 money at him and such, uh, and it was okay. Just, just finish that off. Finish that off. I really want to say, and that was why it ended up being finished. And then yeah, yeah. he did all the file work and everything, and the the vine stuff. Because he's, to my knowledge, I'm pretty sure he is. Uh, my dad's the only person in the city currently that on the back of knife springs, so on us on the Arthur Wright Senator pattern, 
uh, because he's a dab sinker. Obviously, he's, he's a dab hand with a chisel and a hammer. Uh, he chisels in the vine patterns as opposed to hand files the vine patterns. See, uh, the like Taylor's eyewitness vine pattern that they put in is hand filed in, whereas my dad literally sits there with a yeah. chisel and hammer and just chases his way through it. Or whatever. But that's because he's played to his, to his wow. skills. Obviously, being a dive sinker. There's a reason, like, you know, your apprenticeships take years. There's just so much stuff to remember. Yeah. It's so easy to get from it. Even now, like, you know, I'll, I'll do certain things and suddenly go, ah, oh, balls, I've forgotten to do that. <laughs> and then, you know, you're back to back to square one or you've, you've got to backtrack on yourself. Or, but, yeah, ah. you, when, when you make, you know, 20, 30 different styles and eyes, like that, you're going to forget something or mix something up somewhere. And, you know, it's... But I think that's what I like about it, to be fair, is yeah. it doesn't matter how long you've been doing it or whatever, there's always a bit of something different you can do or whatever, or, you know, there's new patterns and things. I mean, I, I could make a pattern a week probably for the rest of my life with, the, you know, all the different patterns that are worldwide and things like wow. that. Wow. And, yeah, it's just, I, I, yeah, I like it. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm still doing it. Ask you, mate, you need to put your prices up because... <laughs> It actually, no, 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 I agree. It actually annoys me. It actually annoys me that people could sell, and I'm not going to mention any name and drop in certain manufactured stuff for a lot of money. Well, in my mind, you're top trump, mate, because you're making that by hand. I would personally pay that over any titanium. I don't care if that's cobalt, I don't give a shit what they use in titanium. I don't care what metal it is. The fact that you're putting your heart, soul, your own experience, you're putting your great grandfather's knowledge into that knife. It's made yeah. in Sheffield by English, by hand, and you're pinning it. I'm sorry, mate, that's worth more than any other maker who doesn't make by hand. Yours is worth 10 times the amount. And we all agree on that across the board. You need to put your prices up, mate, double. I am serious when I say this, mate. You need to double your price, and people will still pay it because yeah. what you're selling is passion, mate, is heart, is soul, is everything in there, is England, is Britain, is is the UK, is the knife makers. Everyone, I think there, no one will disagree with me, mate. Honestly, you are, champ, you are, and, 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 and Paddy knows this, you are my hero, mate. Because you make <laughs> everything by hand. No, no, because I'm a traditionalist, mate. It's flawless, mate, and we're all very proud of you. All the people who claim them are very proud of you, but please put your prices up, mate. And if it, it, it yeah. Just, just, just do it. I, 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 Ashley, I, I, I hate to agree with Dan because I always disagree with Dan, but yeah, he's not wrong. Just, he's just, wait, until, just wait until we get all the knives we want off. You yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so I'd, I'd had the conversation with Paddy because I've only just put myself out there. I didn't want to suddenly be one of these people because I know there are make like I mean Etsy's full or was full of them. People yeah. that would literally nail two pieces of wood to a piece of smashed up yeah. steel that then goes forged. <laughs> and it's like £400. Mm. I'm like, why is that £400? But people would pay it and things like that. But I just, ne I never wanted my name on something like that. So what I've, I've done now is basically, or doing now, was I wanted to basically get myself to, well, I mean, obviously. <laughs> What you've just said there, by the way, is like I'm chuffed to pieces with that. Like, thank you, Brent. You deserve, <laughs> mate. You deserve yeah. it. You, oh, I will we'll tell you, mate. That is what it is. People, All of us. Yeah, where pe where people were almost being like, you you're taking the piss with how cheap this is, because then at least I'd feel like right, the people that are going to be buying them want yeah to pay that money kind of because I, I don't like I, I don't do it for the you know I'm, I'm not sat there you know as soon as this video ends I'm not rolling in a in a sea of cash. <laughs> or anything like that, like, by any means, I don't do it for that. I do it because I, it's my, like I say, it's my hobby, and I just I enjoy doing it, kind of thing. But it is on the it's on the the list of things to do is to is to bump the prices because yeah, I, I do get now that they are getting a little bit not too nice, but they, they're worth more than than I'm saying now, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, I've, I've been saying this for quite a while, the actually, mm -hmm. it just. Mm -hmm. No, um, you haven't, Stephen. You've I'm, been saying I'm going to try and get a better price of him. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just think that for the quality you're putting out, yes, it needs to go up a wee bit. But I can understand exactly what you're saying is you don't yeah. want to overprice yourself before no, your I'm, name I'm is fully really out there. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like, I like my sort of normal stuff. 
a hundred pound a night to me is more than enough. Like way more than enough. Yeah. Minimum hundred and then double that anyway. <laughs> Stop putting these guys out of proper money, mate. Yeah. They're worth it. <laughs> Just, I'm, I'm gonna just, just, just have you as my advert, just ranting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a brilliant marketing idea, Ashley. Dan ranting again. Yeah, Ashley Harrison's nice. Yeah, that's a bit steep, isn't it? They're just Justin. <laughs> Justin, you did say you could edit this. Didn't you? <laughs> oh, don't worry. I can edit this so well that it, I can get Dan to tell Ashley that his knives are too expensive. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Ashley, I have had a ball talking to you. I could literally go on all night, go, but yeah. I really thank you for the time you've given us. No and problem. maybe we'll do it again and do a workshop yeah. tour, anything like that, or show you finish, show you doing a file work or something. But I mean, oh, if I you'll come back you. again, we'd love to have you. And yeah, maybe we'll have a group conversation with other knife makers and get, you know, yeah. after I get as many people as I can to come in. They're absolute pleasure to meet you, mate. Yeah, yeah. you as well. He's gonna say it's good to put faces to names as well, Dax. I know you're on Instagram, but it's, that's just, I just uh -huh. know it, it's a name, but it's nice to actually see you in the in person. Yeah. If anybody yeah. wants to get one of your knives, yep. Are your books are still closed, aren't they? As such. Uh, yeah. Just because obviously everybody from last time you said, "Do you want to make a knife?" or "Do they want a knife?" <laughs> uh, I'm still working my way through. All this. <laughs> <laughs> as, as much as I would love, obviously, to be able to just go, right, you can all have knives. I've only got 10 fingers. So, uh, yeah, I, did, yeah. I, I never took one of them off. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> but all of, my, all of my snubs, I tell them to keep watching Instagram because the nice thing about you that other custom makers don't do is that if you have a spare one or you've done well, yeah. you will put it up for sale. You know, the spare ones are usually like, if I'm not so much getting bored or like, you know, I just need something different just to do, or I'm just trying yeah. something, that, maybe a different yeah. wheel or something. I just want it, does this work? Does it not work? And obviously, I don't want to then wreck something that is somebody's order, kind of. That's usually what they are. But yeah, it's, yeah. they're still functional knives. They should, you know, I could I could pile them all up in a drawer here if I needed to, oh. but it's wasted it. What's the point? No, I got this one today and I am so happy with it. So happy. Um, but look, thank you very much for coming. Um, love to you and the rest of the family. And, uh, We'll speak to you again soon, I hope. Yep, Take care. Thank continue. you so much. Yep. From you, Dan, man. Just, Justin and myself, we really appreciate you coming. Cheers, mate. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> All the best. Yeah. Take it easy. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.